All righty. Well, thank you all again so much for joining us this evening. My name is Mary Robinson. I am a registered dietitian and nutritionist with The Giant Company, and you are joining us for our wellness workshops, which is our class each and every Monday night at 7 p.m. But tonight, we're going to be talking all about seasonal self-care. Okay, so we're going to be talking about um, how really during this season we can take care of ourselves best. And throughout the night, if you have any questions at all, feel free to use the chat feature. So first, we're going to talk about what self-care is, how we would define it, why we should choose self-care. We're going to talk about tips during the season of how to take care of ourselves. And then we're going to wrap up this evening with two very simple DIY self-care ideas that you probably can make with ingredients that you have on hand. So nothing really special um, in terms of the ingredients, but something that you can kind of just do for yourself and provide a little extra self-care during this season. But before I dive into the actual definition of self-care, I want to hear from all of you. What does self-care mean to you? Share in the chat if you wouldn't mind. I would love to hear your thoughts. Um, if you don't have a specific definition, I would be just intrigued to hear what comes to mind when you think of self-care. Feel free to chime into the chat. There's no wrong answer. Ah, that's a good one. Being able to say no. Taking a nap, me time, time for myself. Taking time, yep, yep. Time, right? Time is definitely a factor within self-care. Taking time for yourself so you're not as overwhelmed, key. Yes, very, very key there. Taking care of yourself so that you can take care of others. <laughs> More plants, less animal products, less sugar. Yes, yes. I like that. Taking care of ourselves. Yeah, mentally, physically, and spiritually. Yep. Pampering. Taking time for yourself. Meditation, walking, writing, music, self-time. Being the best you, right? Occasionally putting yourself first, taking time, relaxing, being aware and present to your emotions. I like it. Paying attention to your health, good eating, exercise, praying. Yeah, absolutely. Taking time for yourself. Love these answers. We're kind of hitting on all of the things of self-care. I like it. I like it. Great. Well, keep those messages coming throughout the night. If you think of any other things, um, feel free to chime in. So just because I'm moving on doesn't mean that you can, um, you don't have to answer, but feel free. If you think of another thing, share it in the chat. Interestingly enough, self-care kind of became a hot topic in, ter in 2015. That's when the term really, really started to kind of hit our minds and our, um, just uh, our conversation. That's when it got popular. And then of course, through the pandemic, um, it actually expounded twofold just because of the rates of anxiety and depression increasing, self-care really, really became prevalent. So let's talk about what self-care is. Now, all of you really, really well summed it up in the chat, So, but we'll give you some specific definitions. So by definition, it is the practice of taking care, taking action to preserve or improve one's health. I thought this was very interesting that it said, it didn't just say the action, the, the, like the action of preserving or improving one's health. It's the practice of taking action, right? So self-care might not be something that is easy. It's not always easy to choose to take care of ourselves, right? It's still a practice. It still is something that we have to physically choose, right, in order to do, if that makes sense. I just thought that was really interesting. And there actually is a specific definition from the World Health Organization. So self-care is, is um, identified by the World Health Organization as the ability of individuals, families, and communities to promote health, prevent disease, maintain health, and to cope with illness and disability with or without support of the healthcare provider. So I thought that was very interesting too, that, that the World Health Organization is um, identifying self-care and, and even defining it. But so you can see that between those two definitions, we're covering a lot of ground and territory. When I first think of self-care, my mind usually goes to like, 
a spa day or, you know, and not that that's not self-care, but, but there's so much more to it than that, right? So it's doing these things that are helpful for our bodies so that we can then do the, the things that we need to do in the day, right? Whether that be care for somebody, uh, whether that be just care for ourselves or, um, you know, do our job, do our daily tasks and our daily routine. So, um, and it is not the same as, I don't want to confuse here. I do, it's not the same as being selfish. Okay. Self-care does not equal selfishness or self-indulging. Sometimes, I mean, maybe you can think that, um, you know, getting a manicure or a pedicure or reading a book for a really long time could be a little bit indulgent, um, but that doesn't mean that you're selfish in doing that, if that makes sense. So th that's a little bit of a differentiation I just wanted to make sure of. But some examples, if you're unfamiliar of self-care practices could be uh, keeping your sleep routine, something as simple as that, eating nourishing foods for your bodies, engaging in a hobby, or even expressing gratitude. Somebody had mentioned in the chat a uh, uh, different category. So as I was researching on self-care, it is kind of categorized in different categories. So like physical health, mental health, and then your spiritual health and emotional health was in there too. So these different topics could, are really over a, a wide range. There's different categories for each of these topics, but it's all within self-care. So self-care is very, very, very broad. Going back to the chat, because I saw that some folks else chimed in. Yes, trying not to think of the needs that need to be done and taking time for what you want to do. Consistency, um, putting into your daily routine. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes being selfish is um, not always a bad thing, right? It is important to take a little bit, little bit of time for yourself, right? Um, and helping ourselves as we're. Um, being the best person that we can be. So the importance of self-care. So really, you know, in this season of giving, in the holiday season, you can really give the gift of self-care to yourself. And I would encourage you to do that in whatever way that looks like for you. But by taking care of ourselves, we can, it allows us to operate at our, our best. When we are, when our tanks are full, let's just use the car, the tell, you know, the, the stereotypical car analogy, right? We put gas in our tanks, right? So when our gas tank is full, we're going to be able to go to the places that we need to go. But if our gas tank is empty, we're not going to be able to do the things that we need to do, right? So make sure that you're doing things that give you life, that, um, are enjoyable to you and whatever that looks like. Research does show and support the benefits of self-care on health and outcomes and stress management. So it might not be able to specifically prevent any chronic diseases, but it certainly can support um, positive health outcomes as well as supporting um, essentially like reducing your risk for, for certain chronic diseases, um, reducing your stress. Uh, there's a lot of different positive health outcomes that can come from self-care specifically. So a couple tips for self-care, specifically seasonal self-care. Number one, know and respect your limits. Somebody chimed in the chat about saying, saying no, being able to say no, right? So in the time of holidays, there's a lot of things asked of a lot of different people, right? So we have to be able to know and respect your limits. And so not only do we have to identify what our personal limits are, but also we have to respect them by actually, you know, saying no, it's completely fine or not, you know, not going to every single obligation. There's just a lot of things that can really add up and it's completely okay to put boundaries, know your limits and respect those. Set reasonable expectations. This can go for yourself. This can go for your family. Um, but think about what you want your holiday season to look like and then set those reasonable expectations to, to match that. Again, you don't have to please everyone. That's where it can get a little bit challenging if we are, um, if we're trying to please everyone, right? We, we, um, we have to set those reasonable expectations. Next, decorate for comfort. So with the holiday season, right, there's a, a lot of decorations, physical decorations in your house or in your home, but I would encourage you to do it out of a mindset of what you want to do and what is comfortable for you rather than 
I need to do this for X, Y, and Z, or, you know, I have to have the, the most lit house on the street, or I have to use these colors to decorate with, you know, there's, there's no rules in decorating, especially your own personal space. So I would definitely encourage you to try to brush off the notions and those expectations and do it to what you would like. Care for your body, of course, and going back to physical needs, emotional needs, mental needs, spiritual needs. Um, from a nutrition standpoint, right, we really want to nourish our body and choose those whole nutrient-dense foods. So all foods fit in moderation and variety, but of course there are different foods that are going to provide our bodies with different nutrients and support our bodies in different ways. So make sure that you're taking the priority to care for your body through this season. Stay present in the moment. I, I hear a term or a, a saying that comes to back to my mind is the best gift that you can give to yourself is being present um, or the best present you can give to yourself is living in the presence, present, right? So staying present in those moments, not worrying about, oh, you know, I'm going to see so-and-so or they're going to bring up this one situation, right? When you can really stay present, you're not going to be taken away from those situations. You're not going to miss out on those situations. So try to remain present as much as you can. Um, and then just a couple more here, practicing gratitude. So maybe that's in a journal, maybe that's just in your mind. Um, that can be a really great practice to start as well if you have not already. So let's talk about where to start, right? I gave you a lot of ideas, but this can be overwhelming, right? You might be sitting here saying, you know what, all of that sounds great, but I am short on time, especially in the holiday season, and I don't know where to start, right? So this all sounds well and good, but I can't do this. So here's some ideas just to get you started. Start small, okay? Look at your week and um, decide within your week what works for you. It might just be adding one practice at a time or even just starting with adding one practice within your week. So, and also check in with yourself. So if you're trying to decide what do I need to even start, check in with yourself. Ask yourself, what do I need to, to feel nour nourished? Is it, you know, enjoying some time outdoors? Is it, I don't know, having some time to yourself in the evenings? Is it maybe doing some sort of like physical something, whether that be hygienically, you know, painting your nails, using a sugar scrub on your hands? Um, there's a lot of different options out there. So think about what would help you to feel nourished and then go from there. So then pr practically speaking, pick one practice to incorporate in the week and then add more when you feel ready, okay? So you don't have to do all of the things that I've been mentioning, but just pick one, start there. It can be something super simple, but I would just encourage you because this really is going to give back to yourself. So how will you add self-care this season? I would love to hear some of your ideas in the chat. Feel free to share them in the chat at this time. Um, and as you're thinking, and as you're gathering your thoughts on everything we talked about, we are going to transition to make two really simple DIY recipes that you can use. Maybe you, you know, maybe you need more ideas. Here's two more coming, coming at you right here. Um, but yes, feel free to share in the chat. Um, how you will incorporate self-care this season. Who knows, by sharing in the chat, you might give somebody else an idea. Um, not overdoing things, walking outside, putting a, choosing a, a massage package. Yeah, those are great things to incorporate self-care. I know for me personally, I love drinking tea. So trying to incorporate that a little bit more. I have so much tea and I love it. I really enjoy it. But sometimes I just don't want to take the time, right? The time to simply brew a cup of tea, which doesn't even take long. Um, I did actually make myself some tea tonight and I, I'm really enjoying it. So something just as simple as that. Ah, yes, um, being more simple this holiday season. Love that deep breathing, going out outdoors, uh, going to bed at a reasonable hour. Absolutely. Something as simple as that. Drinking more water. Um, oh, yes, enjoying tea and an advent calendar. Very fun ideas. Okay. 
So keep those ideas coming because we're going to move on to our demo and I can multitask. So um, let's go ahead and talk through these really simple DIY uh, self-care at home ideas. So the first one's a gingerbread scrub, sugar scrub. I'm very excited about this one. So very simple ingredients, as you can see, but it is going to have that gingerbread scent of the season. I love gingerbread one of my absolute favorites. And as you can see, very simple ingredients. So we'll get into this in a moment. And then the final one is a yogurt face mask. I've made these before. Um, they're very successful. I like them. They're very nourishing to your skin. There's a lot of properties found in yogurt and honey that can be beneficial for our skin. Um, very moisturizing. So in two very, very simple ingredients. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing. Again, keep those ideas for how you're going to incorporate self-care coming in the chat. Let me go ahead and actually just chat and check the chat before I turn my uh, camera down. Oh, coffee, yes. Writing in your journal and saying no. Yes, great, awesome. Well, keep those ideas coming. Let's go ahead and dive into this. Again, very, very easy ingredients, but I wanna start with the gingerbread. So first ingredient that I have here, let me go ahead and turn up down my screen. Yes, I'm excited about this scrub too. We're going to see how it turns out. So I've got some coconut oil. We've got a quarter cup of coconut oil that I went ahead and melted um, just prior to the class just to get it melted. So that's what you're going to see in my bowl there. Uh, just a quarter cup of coconut oil. And then I'm using some brown sugar. You can also use coconut sugar if you'd like. I'm going to use about a cup here, but oops. Let me start with my quarter cup. This is a small bag. So I think a quarter cup is gonna be a little bit easier to at least reach. So, and the sugar really is just gonna give us a texture. So it doesn't, you know, we're not eating this. <laughs> so you, you might be thinking, oh, that's a lot of sugar, right? It is kind of, but it's really for the texture. So the sugar is going to exfoliate our hands. You can use it on your arms. You can use it on, I always get very dry elbows during the season. So you can use it on dry skin, that can help. Um, you can really use it, you can even use it on your lips even. Um, wherever you have dry skin. I'm gonna start with three quarters cup and see how that looks. Let's go ahead and give that a little stir here. And then um, I am gonna add a bit of honey as well. So there's, my, yes, there we go. It's incorporated. Oh, this is a gingerbread sugar scrub. Look at that beautiful color. It smells delicious already. <laughs> I can't wait to try it. All right, we're gonna add a little bit of honey. I believe that the recipe calls for a tablespoon. We're just gonna give a squeeze. That's about a tablespoon in there. So, and you can also, if you have it on hand, I didn't have it on hand, but you can also use molasses. If you want something a little bit more tree, true to the gingerbread color, and the gingerbread flavor. You can actually use a little bit of molasses if you have it. Which I was surprised, I couldn't find any in my closet. I love molasses and I always, as I mentioned, I love gingerbread. I make gingerbread cookies every year, which I'm pretty sure I've made them for a class once upon a time. Um, so I have to get some before I make my uh, cookies. We're gonna put a little bit of ginger, a teaspoon of ginger in here. Of course, it wouldn't be gingerbread if we didn't have ginger. I love ginger. And then we're gonna put a bit of cinnamon, teaspoon of cinnamon. And then also a bit of cl cloves, but if you don't have cloves, you can also use a little bit of nutmeg. I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit of nutmeg in here. Ooh, I'm gonna sneeze. I feel it coming on. <laughs> all of the spices, but I love it. All right, we're gonna go ahead and give that a stir. I wish you all could smell this. But look at that beautiful color. And then you can store this, you can put it in a little, little mason jar if you have one of those, or you can put it in, what else could you put it in? Probably could put it in just a, a plastic bag. Um, any sort of airtight container, it will last for quite some time. But there it is, there's our beautiful sugar scrub. So this, again, as I mentioned, you could use this on your hands, you can use it on your lips, you can use it um, really just to exfoliate any sort of skin and leave nice, fresh, soft skin. That's the goal of this. So can't wait to try this. Um, I'll definitely let you know when I send the follow-up email, but let's go ahead and work on our next one. So very, very simple. So that was for our hands. Also, it makes a really great Christmas gift too, or a holiday gift rather, um, that you can give to anybody. You can gift in the gifting season, right? The season of giving. You could package it up and, and give it away. Um, now this one, not so much. I don't know if you would want to gift this one. 
Um, but this is our yogurt face mask. Okay, so we've got some Greek yogurt, just some plain Greek yogurt. Now you can use um, different types of yogurt. I probably would stick to a plain though. You could use traditional yogurt. It doesn't have to be Greek, um, but I would probably, again, try to stick with a plain just because of the added sugar amount that would come with a sweetened yogurt. We're gonna use a quarter cup of yogurt. So just a small scoop. I'm just gonna scoop a bit into my bowl. Now, this is a base for a yogurt mask. And what I mean by that is you can really tailor it to your skin type. So for example, if you have a very, very dry skin, you can add a bit of avocado to this. If you have very oily skin, oatmeal works really well for that. Um, so I've played around with this type of mask before, but this very, again, very simple, just yogurt and, and honey, a little bit of honey in here, about a teaspoon. So there's the probiotic um, that can be very rejuvenating to our skin. The yogurt itself is very hydrating. And then of course the honey has uh, properties that are very beneficial for our skin as well. So all ingredients that probably you have on hand, maybe maybe some of them you don't, and you might want to pick up anyways for your holiday baking, right? Greek yogurt can be a great swap for oil. So if you're making anything with oil, you can use your Greek yogurt in, in place of that. But that's all that there is to it, to this, this mask. And as I mentioned, you can add a couple other variations in terms of adding some avocado, you could add oatmeal, you could add mashed bananas, another very common one. If you want it to be a little bit more, um, I hate to say the word abrasive, but more of like a peel in a sense, there's a lot of masks for that use egg whites. Egg whites can be um, very beneficial for tightening your skin and also for um, removing any sort of like oil or even blackhead removal. I've seen that. So that might be something to stir in as well. Um, let me get, uh, yeah, let me finish this up and I see some good questions in the chat there. But that's all that there is to it. There we have it. So that's our, DIY yogurt face mask. You saw how simple and easy that was to mix up. And we've got our lovely little sugar scrub here. So two very simple uh, DIY self-care ingredients and, and little um, fun recipes to make, right? That you can whip up in just about a couple minutes, right? There you go. All right, let me go ahead and see those questions that are coming in the chat. But if you have to jump off, that is all that we have for our presentation today. Um, thank you all so, so much for joining. I hope that everybody has a great holiday season um, and a lovely rest of their December. Stay warm um, and take some time to treat yourself this holiday season.